Hello guys and welcome to a new Steel Division video today by me Vulcan. Today I have for you a 2 vs 2 on Point de Hoc. We're here once again and this time I'm going to be using the 2E Blindy or the 2nd Armoured French Division and uh, I'm going to be joined by Flash Overlord who is going to be using the 3rd Armoured and we're playing against Regis and the Boogeyman who are going to be playing the 21st Panzer and the 12th SS Panzer respectively. So in this one, uh, it was a very, very interesting game. It basically was a game that really showed off the power of the French recon, as well as the power of the French being aggressive in Phase A. And you'll see, uh, as we continue through this game, just how awesome the French deck can be. And it was a real demonstration, I think, of how they can be used very effectively. So I wanted to bring this uh, replay to you guys for that reason. So I'm just going to switch this to my point of view because that will tell us the story of how I used recon in this game to really give me an advantage and uh, we'll quickly go through the units I had to start with. So at the start I didn't actually have much infantry recon on the left side here. Um, as you can see I've got two machine guns, I've got the command infantry, I've got a command or I've got some infantry, these are the Nerve, the uh, two star uh, infantry squads with the two star M5A1 half track and I've got an AT gun on the left side over here I've got another AT gun I literally just moved it over to this side because I was just gonna move it up to this right road as opposed to the left road where the other AT gun was going and then I bring some more troops into the center as well my teammates are gonna be focusing solely on the right side this is the 2v2 slash 3v3 variant of this map so it is uh, relatively large and there is quite a lot of uh, land to cover. However, if you put your po points in the right place and make a spearhead, then generally you can break through on these kinds of maps. If you choose the right position, then it can go very well. As you can see here, Flash uh, was going to place some infantry to cover off this sort of centre part, but I've noticed that I had a bit of a deficit there, so I moved over a couple of troops and he moved that infantry squad over to him so he could make better use of that. So that's another nerve squad with a command infantry squad driving off in their little car. I love these little jeeps, they look really funny. But either way, they're off to the centre. This uh, AT gun's off to the right road. And these lot are all coming up to this town. So I was a bit, a bit apprehensive. I know that the uh, 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 Axis side can generally get to the town around the same time if they use some faster vehicles. So I was a bit apprehensive about that. But I do have the Spahi. And that is a very fast uh, M8 Greyhound right there. And it's two star. So that can definitely do a lot of damage to incoming forces. That's leading the charge here, perfect unit to lead the charge since it does have the recon available and will allow me to see what's coming down the road as soon as it gets into line of sight. You see I'm starting to spot the tanks and half tracks coming down the road. So I managed to zoom one of my MGs all the way up. And I'm managing to get my half tracks into position thanks to their Panzer 35s being relatively slow. Panzer 35 is going to open up onto my M8 Greyhound. At max range, I'm pretty satisfied that my M8 should be able to take on the Panzer 35 because he's a lot more likely to hit. However, Panzer 35 does have six armor in the front, so pretty low pe penetration chance at max range. I just decide not to. Uh, let the Panzer 35 hit my Greyhound which only has three armor and just move it off behind the building. Just moving my uh, AT gun up into position into this little bush here. Once he's there he's in cover and he can fire all the way down the road which is absolutely lovely. Now I've moved my half track over to this left side that has a really nice line of sight here. You see all the way across to the right. Really really nice place. I just about managed to drop off the uh, spy before the jeep was destroyed by the Panzer 35. That's my recon squads now coming in. I brought them in on the first tick of uh, extra points. And I've got another spy squad here joining my Vodigas and the Nerve. In the centre, spy just moving up to capture this house. 
and the idea here is just to uh, try and pick off some of these units the AT gun in the perfect position to take out the Panzer 35 as it advances and that has already given me a really nice advantage on this left side getting that AT gun into that position. I'm also moving forwards this AT gun over to the left because I saw their overinvestment in these armoured vehicles so yeah, just bringing over the AT guns to counter those and this is a three star M8 at the moment thanks to the uh, command infantry. Going to be engaging Panzer 35 and well eventually I decide that he's pushing his luck and I don't want the last hit from the Panzer 35 to hit me so I'm just going to move out of line of sight quickly to avoid that last shot. There's another tank here you have to be a bit worried about and I can obviously see infantry moving down over here thanks to my command squad. I'm just going to be moving around the half track so that that can be used as fire support if it comes into firing range of my infantry. This uh, recon squad is basically checking up this road up here and I've also got another recon greyhound on the way. So this recon greyhound is basically coming to assist the command infantry and my half track in taking out the infantry in the center. I've got my spay here now opening up onto the enemy infantry in this tree line thanks to the spahi getting into this building. And I have another jeep here with another recon squad coming up. You can see I'm investing a lot into recon at the start of this game. Now, I'm well aware that uh, the opponents can't really push forwards with their armour at the moment because I've got two AT guns here. They are obviously investing a lot in this to this armour, the Panzer 35, getting very uh, good angles onto my M8 at the moment. And I'm just trying to use the M8 to kill off their half track here. But that half track is two stars. There's a lot of morale damage to my Greyhound. And what we can see here is as the Panzer 35 comes round with its main gun and fires a shot on target, it's going to force my Greyhound to fall back and just as the front line swings over it, unfortunately my Greyhound surrenders. However, the 57mm AT gun definitely repays the kill and takes out the Panzer 35. So you could say the M8 Greyhound got the best end of that deal, just surrendering rather than being killed. I did uh, take out a Panzer Grenadier squad in the centre earlier, the command, well the half track being three stars they're definitely going to chew apart that squad and you can see here the M5A1 able to uh, cut up the Panzergrundfuhrer in the open as they move up towards our lines. Now these Spahi just here I've actually got them on return fire just so they don't get spotted by all of these half tracks and I just do the same with the ones in the centre as well because I don't want them to know that I'm seeing all of their stuff right now. I've taken up out a lot of their tanks, I've taken out one, two now I know there's probably a third. That's not particularly an issue at the moment. As I'm now moving up my infantry into position. So I've got another squad of Nerve and the command infantry pushing to this field here. See if I can make some ground against this half track. We've also made a lot of ground in the centre, as you can see. Taking out that Panzergren squad that was holding the front line has meant that we've made a lot of ground. 57% actually. Panzer 35 has come over to the left side to take care of this M5A1 which had the massive uh, crossfire against uh, the end opponent's troops. So that was a really nice movement of this Panzer 35 just to get rid of that extra fire support. However, the 57mm AT gun is on the board again as it fires back towards the Panzer 35. My M8 Greyhound comes along to take care of that half track and that's going to allow my nerve to move across this field and capture the next tree line. I can obviously see this AT gun sitting just here and that's going to be a big worry for me as I am going to want to use armour to cut through their lines but with that pack 43 there I'm going to have to be extremely careful of how I go about it. With my nerve coming under fire here must be a recon squad because the front line is not being pushed forwards. I've just got to go and find that squad now. And they have get to the tree line here and are going to be spotted by multiple half tracks including the Flak AA. I'm just going to make sure that they don't suffer any casualties. And here we go, we can see the Spiertrup being spotted by the Nerve as we get close enough and well they're not going to last very long with the 50 cal fire support from the half track. 
But slowly I'm making kills here and there. And the two tanks are dead. They've still got one more tank of course. Um, they have this uh, pack 43 and I've just been slowly cutting through their infantry in the center. The spear troop and the Panzergrenadier is suffering uh, under the hands of the half track and the Niv. I'm bringing up an M10. You're probably wondering why you're doing that. Well, I'm pretty sure that this pack 43 doesn't have the aim time to kill my M10 and the M8 in the time it takes for them to move from right to left and that's basically what I managed to get away with and the reason I'm bringing these over to the left is to deal with the Panzer 35 that was over here but I don't want to drive directly around here because if the Panzer 35 is sitting here for example or just there then that could easily side shot my M10 as it comes around the corner and I just got to be very careful about that so I'm just getting the M8 into this tree patch just so that it can provide recon up here and obviously we did spot the tank now moving to the right get spotted by my extra recon squads here this allows me time to get the machine gun into that house so i'm very wary of infantry moving down that side as you can see these nerve are under fire from the mortar and also the tank now i'm just going to be running away from that fire as fast as i can and I'm moving the uh, half-track out of line of sight of the tank as well. Just so they don't lose any units unnecessarily. However, my M5A1, well that's actually managed to get line of sight onto the Pack 43 and I'm just going to allow that restar half-track to pin down the Pack 43 entirely and actually kill it off. That was <laughs> pretty crazy how efficient that M5A1 half-track was against that AT gun. Having the recon on that was absolutely wonderful. And they brought up this Vielfachwerfer, which is uh, quite annoying. Doesn't actually do too much damage, but definitely starts to affect the morale of some of my infantry. If he kept that firing, it would have definitely pinned down all of these forces that were under fire. The two mortar carriers start to open up onto my half-track, and I'm well aware that they have now a Vielfachwerfer and two mortar half-tracks, which is quite a lot of points invested there in artillery. M8 uh, Greyhound's also spotting a lot from this right side. It's got the line of sight through the hedgerow there to spot this half-track and also the new recon squad moving towards the front lines. I'm well aware they have this Panzer 35 over on the left and obviously you can see these half-tracks, the half-tracks using fire position on this hedgerow. Still moving forwards in the center, finally moving on to the Niv and the Voltigers, trying to get them into this compound here, trying to get a flanking position onto this main force just to make sure that there isn't anything else there. And I've also got an infantry squad heading to the center of the map to uh, push up there as well. You see that I do take out one of the half tracks as it decides to move back, and now this Panzer 35 getting into a pretty obvious ambush position alongside this half track that's also moving towards the tree line. Of course up my own mortars now and they are going to be opening up onto these Panzer Grenadiers. See, it looks like I originally told them to uh, counter battery the enemy mortars. As I can see them completely I know exactly where I want to fire. And those mortars are coming down onto my AT gun here. The machine gun that I deployed in this left house coming in handy, taking out the spear troop. And I also managed to use the uh, MA Greyhound to pin down and destroy the enemy Vielfachwerfer being used to try and pin down my infantry and so on. But no, I'm not going to hit the right rockets at the right time. I'm well aware of this Panzer 35 here. I'm going to run straight into this ambush on purpose at the moment. Because what I want to do is use the Panzer 35 to take out one of these and then try and trade the kill. So I'm just rushing it with all of my Stuarts. And boom, one shot. Reload time takes too long of the Panzer 35 and I managed to kill it off. So I sacrificed one of my Stuarts to get a good advantage here. I know that he's invested so many points into this artillery and I'm pretty sick of it. So I'm just going to rush on through, kill one half track, with one of the mortar half tracks, I've made this half track bail out. I've killed the Vilvakwerfer, and well, all that's left now is the, the mortar half track to be killed, and the flak up here as well. My Stuarts are on the case, and now there's a Pans 4 up here, but the M10 going to be doing the job with its 13 AP power, easily taking out that Panzer 4. 
It was just the uh, simple version without the skirts. And the normal Panzer IV does get taken out very easily by 13 AP power once that M10 is on target thanks to the this command infantry wasn't really going to miss that Pan's Grenadier is going to be pinned down very nicely and well the yeah, Greyhound's going to arrive right in front of this half track and pin that down before it can finish off my infantry on the left and just like that I cut straight through the enemy lines like a warm knife through butter got all of this infantry here and it's literally being hit from all sides my half track over here with the M8 Greyhound I've got my M8 Greyhound on the left supported by the M10 and then the two Stuarts moving forwards with my half track and the command infantry in the centre and well if we jump to the neutral perspective there is nothing left and that is pretty obvious by the fact that the front line has just swung entirely in my favour. That's pretty much it, it was just a massive build up. I waited until I had enough points. We moved into phase B, I took full advantage of the units that I had before he could reinforce all of his artillery and well he felt safe behind this tree line but he wasn't for very long as soon as his Panzer 35 died on this left side and well this is really what I mean by the power of the 2E Blindy, they are very, very strong at doing these very aggressive pushes through the enemy lines. And some of you guys may have called that the enemy hard point, but I was well aware that he'd overinvested in artillery. Those mortar half tracks costing like 85 point seats, the Wielfachwerfer costing like 130 points, and he only had like one Panzer 35 left after I'd already killed the other two. So, unless he had AT guns, I wasn't necessarily in a bad position. But then I knew that there was a Pack 43, I can take that out very easily, and all of this is thanks to my recon. So, not only do my M8s have recon with the Spahi, but uh, I have the uh, Spahi uh, recon infantry squads as well so this is the m8 greyhound spahi and uh yeah these spahi squads really doing a good job as well sitting in these uh, houses very silently silently being my forward observers and well since i don't need this defensive position anymore the entirety of my force is just moving forwards into uh, the edge of the map here just to make loads of ground and my teammate on the right side he's still holding strong hasn't made too much ground, just kept the line 50-50 on his side, but I've definitely made an absolute ton of ground. These Spehe run into the uh, infantry here, the Spehtrup, and there was a Panzergrenz squad as well here. Again, if I go to the neutral perspective, Pioneers, um, MG42, he's reinforced the centre very much so, and I'm well aware of this thanks to the Spehe. Unfortunately, they are going to get pinned down in the open, and... Uh, very much harassed <laughs> by the enemy infantry until that uh, squad goes down. But I've made all of this ground on the left side. We're 1,650, well, 1,660 points up on the opponents, and we're at a plus three, so that's going up even quicker now. Now, since it has run into phase B, and I have had a lot of points, uh, I have brought up this sort of contingent of Shermans. I've got the Command M4A2 supported by a Command M4 or, or a normal M4A2. Two star variant making that three star thanks to the command of the Command M4A2. And then I've got a M4A3 76mm as well just for the 13 AP power there and the 12,000 meter range just to allow me to pop uh, larger tanks like the uh, Panzer IVs. I've got this AT gun here being brought up by the half track. I went back and grabbed that with the half track and took it all the way up to the front line to take it into this bush just here. As I've got my M10 here sitting behind as well. The idea here is just to uh, have my units in this position so they can fire off down the road if any reinforcements come in from the left side. However, uh, my opponent has decided to just try and push down the middle, try and make back some ground, and he certainly is doing so since uh, we don't really have anything in the centre currently. All of my infantry that was there did eventually die out. Uh, but I still have, of course, all of these units over on this left side. Very veteran units. My mortars are still moving up very slowly, and I didn't really get to use them much throughout this game, and of course I still have all of these tanks here waiting to be told what to do. Since I'm uh, 
I've got this defensive position here with the M10 and the uh, 27 mil AT. I can just leave that position, move my Stuarts over towards the chateau here, bring one of the half tracks with me and one of the M8 Greyhounds, and I'm finally going to fast move some of these Shermans back to the right as well, just to stop this push coming down the centre of the map. Now it's quite a nice idea for my opponent to be pushing down into the centre now with his troops. However, at this point, with a plus two lead, it's too little too late, and you can see we are only 50 points off at the end of the game, and I've also got my reinforcements coming up here as well. There was a Panzergrenadier squad here that managed to, or Pioneer squad, managing to pin down my AT gun. This AT gun had already done its job, it actually picked off one of the Panzer IVs as it came down onto the main road, so that stopped uh, Regis's push in its tracks. And well, it's pretty much over as we hit the 2,000 point mark. After 18 minutes and 34 seconds, we win the game. And well, this is uh, pretty much, like I was saying, a very stereotypical French deck game. Uh, the French deck is extremely aggressive. It's extremely good with its recon. And that recon certainly allowed me to identify the points that were invested in the enemy team and allow me to just cut through their defences with the sacrifice of that one Stuart. And that's basically how I won the game. And this is a really good example of how you can exploit what the opponent has invested their points into. It really showed in, a, in the 10v10 I uploaded the other day that um, you can do this quite a lot. You can definitely... Uh, for example, I was playing, I think, the 15th Scots against the 91st Luftlander. I noticed he spent 360 points on planes at the start of the game out of his 500, which allowed me to just slice through all of his uh, units on the ground. And I made so much ground so quickly in that game that it allowed my team to completely control the left flank of the map. And in this case, it's the same thing. Um, my opponent didn't invest in the correct forces at the right time. Yes, he had the right idea of using those three pounds of 35s, but I don't think he made up for the fact that he lost two of them, and he also lost the pack 43, which is a 130-point AT gun, and he lost it to a 20-point half-track. So that's just uh, something to be well aware of. If we go to the team perspective, you can see I got 1,445 kills for 285 losses, which is absolutely nothing. My losses were indeed the Stuart, uh, the Spahi, the Nerve in the middle, and a couple of half tracks, of course. But in terms of kills, well, this uh, AT gun killed two of his Panzer 35s. My half track certainly did work, one of them killing the Pack 43. This second AT gun taking out the Panzer 4G in the center of the map alongside another Panzer 35. And then finally, my Command Stuart here taking out the last Panzer 35 as well as some extra units and the M10 certainly taking out this Panzer IV from long range very effectively thanks to the buff of the Command Infantry nearby. And there you go, that's pretty much it. So hopefully you guys enjoyed this one, just a quick demonstration of how effective the French deck can be to people who uh, aren't necessarily prepared, but there we go. Um, hopefully you've enjoyed this one, thanks for watching and I'll see you in the next video. Goodbye.